All right, guys, we have a Yamaha Drive. I don't know the year. I didn't run the serial number yet. It's not as easy as it is on the easy goes in club cars to figure out what the year is because you have to decipher the serial number. But we have a gas cart. This is going to be a normal routine thing on this golf cart. It's just going to be a, a full service. We're not going to be doing any type of repairs or anything like that, but I just wanted to bring you along for this one. This cart has been washed. We just pulled it out of the storage facility. It was in winter storage. I have a feeling this thing's gonna end up turning on on us here. Check the pressure, we're at 10 PSI. I like my tires to be at 20, especially when they have a back seat on them. The hair just below 20. That's typically where I'll land it. I know this is really hard to see this tire. 12 PSI. Alright, now the tires are good. The brake is good on this. This air filter looks brand new. My filters are orange, and that's paint. There's a stripe on the inside of the filter, that's what that is. That's not dirt. FIL0001 is this filter. Make sure they line up on the tabs. Pull these locks up. We're good. Change the plug. The spark plug wasn't very tight. Plug's not all that bad. I only use NGK plugs, BPR2ES. They're already pre gapped. Brand new plug. There we go. That spark plug did not come out with any resistance. I wonder if it was having running issues. Belt is really loose, we gotta adjust that. For belt adjustment, you need 12 millimeter. See, there's a jam nut down here you have to get on. You have to loosen this nut, and then there's a 10 millimeter jam nut here you loosen, and then you crank the screw in and that is what tightens up your starter generator belt. Get in here, you just have to loosen it, you don't have to remove it. And then you can see the deflection. It's very, it's very floppy, so let's tighten it up. Loosen this jam nut. Once you get it loose enough, you should be able to turn it by hand. Turn it out quite a bit, and then you can either use a ratchet with a 10 millimeter socket or a wrench like I'm doing here, and just tighten up this 10 millimeter bolt. And you can see we're already starting to get tight. In some cases you have to loosen up the starter generator bolts, some cases, but not this one. This one's loose enough where you don't have to. go and then you tighten up your jam nut your 
10 millimeter jam nut. Don't go too crazy with it. You don't want to bend that tab or strip out that bolt. And then tighten up your 12 millimeter 12 jam nut. Okay, there we go. Starter generator belt is nice and tight. In your drive clutch, you have this Zerk fitting. You gotta shoot some grease into that. And make sure you clean this mess up because this clutch will fling this grease all over the bottom side of your seat. It'll get on your drive belt and then you're just gonna have a big problem. If you get a really big mess like this, you can use some brake cleaner, carb cleaner, recommend brake cleaner. It's not as mean to the rubber parts. You don't want it on the clutch surface. You get it on the face of that sheave, you're gonna have to really go at it and clean it good because it will cause the belt to slip. There's really no way of getting rid of it without replacing the belt, that is. You have to replace your belt. And that's, it's an avoidable task, so. While we're here, we'll do the battery. Somebody's added a light kit to this cart and they've put these nuts on the end here. Just a little added work is all that is. A lot of times these will get stuck or they'll corrode so bad you can't loosen them up. You have to just grab the battery cable clamp here with the Preferably like a channel locks and if you don't have or if you do have access to you can use a battery terminal puller Notice that I took their negative terminal off first Positive last okay. It's out of the way now, so what I'm also going to do is check our water level rock them off Water levels good distilled water only all you ever add to batteries is distilled water, never tap water. Water level is good. Watch your eyes around this stuff and your clothes. Okay, while well, we have the battery disconnected from the cart, we're gonna give it a, a load test and then we're gonna test the charging system later. Okay, battery's good. This tool here is designed to scrape the crud. It's not that great of a tool. Personally, not a big fan of it, but I'm gonna give it a shot here. Yeah, definitely not digging this tool at all. Garbage can it goes. I had a battery post cleaner. I don't know where the heck it went to though, so good old fashioned wire brush. And then for the cart battery cables, I'll use this plumber's tool made for cleaning copper pipe. It works really good for this kind of thing. But because of the way this battery hold down works, 
you can't get the terminals into these re these hoops here, so you have to wire brush them. Works pretty good. Never a f really a fan of these types of terminals because they have just plain steel components to them, so they do like to rust out, and they rust out fairly easily. Okay, battery's good. All right, cart is in neutral. Key switch is on. We're gonna do a charging system test now just to make sure it's charging properly. You don't need to load it up for this, it's just basically to see what the voltage is. You could technically do this with a regular voltmeter, but we're got, we have this meter at our hand here. It's riding right about 14 and a half, 15 volts. So we know that we're good there. Hopefully you guys can see that with the vibrations. As long as it says about 15 volts on this meter, I know that's charging at about 14.6 volts. Right around there, that, <laughs> that meter is not very accurate. Okay, so the only thing left we have now is fuel, filter, and engine oil. I have to check the lights. Make sure everything's working. Horn works. They're blinking. All right, so we know that they work. Turn our headlights on. Headlights work. Parking lights and turn signals are working. You see our indicator pilot lights are working. So our headlamp indicator works and our turn signal indicators are working. See, and again, you can see the filter's not really that dirty looking. by looks. Feels like it look perfectly clean. But this one has water in it. So we're changing it. Does that mean there's water in the fuel? Probably. A large amount to be concerned with? Maybe. But the engine starts right up. It's not throwing any fits when it's trying to start up. It's not running, or it's running without having to choke it constantly. So I'm really doubting that there's any water in the carburetor. A little bit of water in the fuel filter doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually in the fuel tank, which it could be. It very well could be. I'm not saying that it's not possible. I'm only saying I'm only seeing it here in the fuel filter. I really hope it's in focus for you. Should be, but yeah, you can kind of see. See how it's all runny? If I spin it. See how it's all running down the side of the filter? That's water. The gasoline doesn't do that. The gasoline one doesn't really stick to the plastic. The water does. So there's water in this filter. All right, so now I basically have the golf cart tipped on its side. Drain the oil now. 17 millimeter. milky that is. Needless to say, it was due. It's probably never been changed. It's very cream, like caramel colored. 
It should either be like golden brown or black, usually. This kind of tells me that this customer doesn't run this cart that much because it's got some what looks like moisture in the oil. I can smell gasoline on the oil too. Too, too rough with those because they will strip out easily. No oil filters on Yamahas either. All right, you can see the oil light is on. These things hold exactly one quart of oil. And we're gonna add in some 10W30. Move the dipstick first, place it there. Remove the oil fill cap. So one thing I miss about the older Yamahas, they had that really nice big oil fill port. It was like this big around. This thing, you need a little funnel or a fill bottle like this, so you don't spill it. In case you're asking, this is a two quart oil can, galvanized. I hate it, but at the moment it's all I have, so you have to use it. All right, now that we've dumped like one quart of 10W30 in there, let's dipstick it. All right, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that is spot on. I always do my best to try to clean the engine compartment before I do an oil change. That just helps eliminate any dirt from falling through the dipstick hole or the filler hole. Okay, the oil light has gone out. Let's start it up. I'm seeing little stringies of grease flinging off that clutch so I, because I wasn't able to get every bit of it. A lot of times you can't, but it's one of the maintenance things you have to do. It's better to grease it and have a little bit of a mess than not grease it and have a replacement clutch repair bill. All right, so let's check it again. I like to remove the dipstick, wipe it. I just kneeled in a puddle of water. Reinsert the dipstick and check it again. All right, and it is spot on. I hope you, I don't know if you guys can see that. Probably not. And don't be afraid to spray down your the battery hold down rods and bolts too or nuts too because that way they don't corrode as easily. Okay, so there you go. That is what consists of a full service on a golf cart. At least a newer golf cart, that's all that we really do. There's not a whole lot on these things. There's not any grease fittings except for that one on the clutch. The front ends don't have grease fittings anymore unless they're aftermarket. Tires are good. It starts, stops, and steers as it should. So this one is ready to go back to the customer. We're gonna get it loaded on the trailer and get the next one in here. I appreciate it if you, if you haven't already liked this video, subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them as best as I can without seeing the golf cart physically in front of me. It's sometimes difficult, but I'll do my best to give you the best advice that I have. Uh, all right, guys, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.